The March jobs report is out, showing that the United States economy has recuperated more than 90 percent of the jobs lost during the pandemic's peak impact. 431,000 jobs were added last month, and the unemployment rate dipped to 3.6 percent, just a touch higher than the pre-pandemic levels. Things seem to be heading in the right direction, but President Biden says the hard work is far from over, especially when it comes to cutting down the federal deficit. Under my predecessor, the federal budget deficit went up every single year, every year. As I committed when I was running this and I got here, we're going to turn that around. In fact, last year, in 2021, we cut the federal deficit by more than $350 billion. And this year, in 2022, we're on track to cut the deficit by more than $1.3 trillion. $1.3 trillion. That would be the largest one-year reduction in a deficit in U.S. history. Here to discuss what that jobs report means is investor, venture capitalist, my friend, Kevin O'Leary. Kevin, what stood out to you the most in terms of this latest jobs report? That it broke 4%. Anytime you have an economy with unemployment less than 4%, you're almost at full employment. Mm. I mean, between here and 3%, 0.6% more, you see extraordinary numbers, fantastic recovery. There was evidence of this two quarters ago. We're, we're kind, of, kind of coming out of the pandemic. The only issue is lingering inflation, obviously. But there's good news there, too. Um, the, the, as you recall, we were, had a deficit of about 20% of truckers weren't backed, and prices of transport, tra transportation were skyrocketing. They've dropped 35% in the last five weeks on spot trucking pricing. So I, I consider that a very good outcome. You know, even with these unemployment numbers, though, Kevin, we know that there's five million more job openings than actual workers um, that are there to actually do that. How do we reconcile the fact that we have such a such a low unemployment number that's being released right now and the fact that there's five million more job openings than available workers? Because the economy changed, Katie. It's no longer the economy of pre-pandemic. What's happened is it's digitized. There's all kinds of new jobs that have been formed to help companies sell direct to consumer. I don't care who you are in the S&P, the model has changed. Consumers got used to being serviced direct to where they live. And as a result, all kinds of talent, such as videographers, editors, storytellers, photographers, that were underserved prior to the pandemic are now in huge demand. And they're getting paid a lot of money because there aren't any of them available. So they're going into con contract labor. And it's one of the largest and most increasing prices in my companies now, the 35 companies that are in my private portfolio, the number one cost increase right now is in social media, both buying the advertising and producing the content. Extraordinary outcome, extraordinary outcome of the pandemic. But Kevin, do you think that the wages are actually going to be keeping pace with what's happening? We, you mentioned some lingering inflation. Everybody in America is feeling it a little bit in their pocketbooks, no matter who you are. Do you think the wages actually need to hasten and quicken the pace to be able to ensure they keep up with inflation? Well, they are in some cases. The service industry was highly criticized, particularly servers, for example. Mm -hmm. In California today, the minimum wage is $15. However, you can't hire anybody for $15. Most people are paying $20 to $22 an hour, and that's the market being the market. So wages are increasing based on demand. It doesn't, you, know, you don't need a minimum wage anymore. With a shortage of workers, the market determines what people should make. Now, regarding the inflation, which is really why you want wage increase, there's really two components. One is energy, and that's a self-inflicted wound with bad policy. Shutting down all of this energy production was not a good idea. And secondly, food prices. Now, that has a lot to do with transportation that might be getting fixed, but the Port of Los Angeles is still broken, regardless of what anybody says. Very hard to get product through there. So there's much more work to be done. And with the midterms coming, this will have political consequences. There's no question about it. Yeah, but Kevin, isn't it fair to say, though, it would kind of be irrelevant whether it's Biden or someone else that's in the Oval Office. Um, at the end of the day, the supply chain disruptions were caused by the pandemic. And frankly, the energy decisions in terms of trying to impose the sanctions and the taxation that's going on right now, that's happening because of a war that's outside the control of President Biden. So do you really think it's going to have that much of a negative impact on the Dems coming up for the midterms? I think it's going to be a slaughter fest. I mm. think it's going to be just a wipeout like you've never seen. Now, remember, I don't care who the incumbent is. You always lose some seats in the midterms. But this case, nothing destroys a presidency more than inflation because you feel it at the pump. You feel it when you're buying chicken. You feel it every day when you're consuming goods and services. And you know what to do when you get to the voting. And that's what happens. It's pretty ugly. I, I would forecast it's going to be one of the most ex extraordinary deficits 
uh, coming out of this midterm. And what it means for policy, regardless of what side of the, the aisle you're on, it, you know, when you have a complete switch of power in the House, nothing gets done. It goes to gridlock. And frankly, the market's going to like that. It's time to stop spending. And I think that's a good thing that the tax reform won't happen that Biden's hoping to do. So all of this stuff will have to wait until 36 months later when we have a new general election. Yeah, but a lot of analysts are saying, Kevin, that the idea that interest rates are going to go up, that that's probably not going to happen because we are going to have an adjustment in terms of inflation. The fact that the Federal Reserve hasn't raised interest rates thus far, don't you take that as a good sign that perhaps there's a lot of chicken little going on right now? Yeah, there could be. But, you know, even if the, even if the Fed raises rates 100 basis points or 1 percent, that still leaves us an extraordinarily low interest rate environment, which is why you're seeing the market itself trying to decide which direction it should go. You know, there was a time when people were talking about six or seven Fed hikes, 25 basis points at a time, or even 50 basis points. They're not talking about that anymore because there's a war going on, obviously, which is tragic. But also, there's all kinds of supply chain issues. We talked about the truckers, but there's more to do there. And yet, at the same time, the economy looks very strong from a jobs perspective, under 4%. So a lot of mixed signals. The two and 10 year are inverted, which is often used to signal an, uh, a recession. I don't think we're going to get that. I don't mm -hmm. feel it yet. So I'm, I'm more optimistic. Well, I'm going to take that Kevin O'Leary optimism, because if you're banking on that, I'm going to invest. Kevin, my friend, thank you so much for being here. Take care, Katie.